today we'll be featuring Phoenix and Bow Albion. I've had this soap for about a year and uh, I've used it a couple of times, but I figured um, since I hadn't used it in so long that, you know, this won't be my first impression, but I figured I'd review it for you because it's, um, Phoenix and Bow is, um, they're based in uh, England, but they haven't made like a huge splash over here. There's a few scents that, um, that are sought after, like uh, for instance, Whitechapel. That was like a limited edition. Um, it has a cool story behind it. But, um, some people have that one. This is another one that people tend to gravitate towards. But the other, the others that seem to pop up more are Denali. It's their uh, mint. It's like a mint, minty scent. And the Imperial Rum, which is their take on Bay Rum, and then um, Spitfire, which is all leather and juniper type scent. So those are, their, I would say, those are their more popular ones over here. But, um, I like this one a lot. Um, I'll get to the scent notes later. But um, Phoenix and Bow, they've been around for a, about three years. I think they came out in 2015. And um, I didn't really hear about them until about a year ago. I just noticed that they, they started, um, they came out with these uh, really awesome looking labels. I mean, even in this bad lighting, you can see how cool this looks. And I'll review another one in the future that looks even better than this one. But they just have very striking labels. And I think that's really what sold their soaps over here. Because um, there's not many stockists that carry them. I think West Coast Shaving had them at one time. But I think Merchant and Rhodes is the only U.S. retailer. And um, I'll put more links down below where you can get them, but um, you can buy them directly from Phoenix and Bo's website. Or um, in the, you, if you're in the UK, you can buy them from top of the chain. No, that's actually Canada. Canada's top of the chain. In uh, Britain, it is Agent Shave and uh, Cannot Shaving, which is, uh, in my opinion, that's the best place to buy them outside of the US if you have to, because the shipping was very reasonable. I think I got. Um, Imperial rum for under twenty dollars shipped, or it was it wasn't more than twenty or twenty one, which is pretty good if you're buying from overseas. And you know, there's there's brands like Australian Pri Private Reserve, um, which are you know mid twenties in price in U.S. dollars, and then with, with shipping, you'll be paying thirty something dollars for just one soap. So um, it's a little easier to come by than that. Um, I've only had to do that once, and this right here was actually gifted to me. It was pipped to me by um, a guy I know on Instagram. So he did a giveaway, and I won it. And uh, really like this scent. I'm excited to bring it to you and uh, talk about it. So let's get that going. But this scent is, just, um, is a, a blend of bergamot, lavender, and grapefruit. Now, if you have tried Katie's Bubbles Purple Grapefruit and think, oh, maybe I'll like this one, don't be so sure because they are completely different scents, even though they have a lot of the, I'm pretty sure they have. Um, the same ingredients, you know, just scent notes anyway, but they're they're just they're added differently. It's just, they're different approaches to similar scents. Katie's Bubbles Purple Grapefruit is a lot sweeter, and there's a lot more lavender in it. The lavender in this is, uh, to my nose, it's it's more subtle, and it um, it's used to round out the more bitter bergamot and grapefruit. So the citrus in here is not sweet at all. It's it's a lot. It's it's pretty bitter to my nose anyway. I mean, your nose may pick up something different, but it is quite bitter. The lavender just does its job, and the lavender's a little sharp too. So this sharp, this this uh, this scent is a sharp scent. And it has some bite to it. So if you like sweet sweet citrus, maybe um, maybe avoid this one. I don't know, but I think it's a fresh scent, and I like it a lot. But um, as far as scent strength goes, I would say it's it's pretty up there, like a seven and a half or eight. It's fairly strong. It's on the lower end of like strong. See, I, my scale, scent scale is like, if I say it's low, it's one to four. Mid strong is five to seven. And then strong would be seven and a half to 10. And while most people I know, I don't see this up for resale a whole lot. I've seen it a few times for trade. But a few detractors of this scent have told me that they think it smells like um, ammonia. And I can see if maybe your nose isn't picking up the lavender as much or the, the, the little bit of sweetness that is in there, then you might, you know, I could see where somebody would, would interpret it as that. But to me, it's a fresh, nice um, spring, summer scent. So, as you can see, this is very thirsty. I've been I've added water probably ten times. This is a very so thirsty base, and in just application alone, it reminds me a lot of the 
few, very few times that I've tried Barrister and Man's White Label Soap, which is their original soap base. Accident, but the camera fell and so you know, the camera mount fell and so did my phone. But um, we're back now, nothing's broken. So, as I was saying, when it fell, this soap, this lathering capabilities, its thirstiness, and all that reminds me a lot of Bear Man's white label, which I've only used a couple of times, and it's been a while about a year since I last used it. But in performance too, it's very similar. The white label is very good, but it's 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 a lot harder to work with than the Glissant base, at least in my opinion. Dude. I've heard others make the same comparison too, and I absolutely agree with them on that. It is very thirsty. If you saw in the lathering portion when I was talking about the scent, I I was dunking my brush like over and over again so that it would not dry on my face. But you are rewarded with a very shiny, dense lather if you hydrate this properly, if you dial it in. And I'd say it on every metric, it's very good. It's got, good, it's got very good slickness and good, good um, residual slickness. Just it's slick, very slick. I've heard people say, some people say it's just not slick for them. I was like, you probably didn't use enough water. And what, you know, water type varies too. I don't know how well this is formulated for people who have hard water. Apparently my water is very moderate to soft. So, <laughs> yeah, buffing, which, is, which means that after you have made a pass with your razor and if you want to go over the part again without, um, that part of your face again without having to reapply lather, it would be slick enough for you to do that, and this soap is no exception. I don't know if I'd do it on my neck, but um, I don't think most, the average skin type would have any problem buffing in between passes. So, um, very good, very good. I don't know if you can see the shine on this, but it's very shiny, very silky. And uh, if I hadn't said it before, this is a tallow based soap, and it's also got lanolin in it, which is a uh, lanolin is the extract of wool fat, of sebum oil, which is gross, but it's in there. Um, and the silky quality to this is probably owes it owes it to the uh, tussa silk that is in here, which is the I've mentioned it before in other videos. Those are made by silkworm larva. And this this is uh, you're rewarded with a very nice feeling lather if you uh, use the right amount of water. All right, back. Post shave is quite good on this. Um, I mean, it's not elite, but it's, it feels very good. Um, you will not be disappointed in the shave if you use the right amount of water. And uh, it's a mid firm soap, and so it lather it loads up easily. But here's the catch: if you are in a hurry, I wouldn't recommend using this brand because you have to you have to work with the water. You really need to add as you go, so you need to take your time with it. Um, I've rushed shaves with Phoenix and Bo before, and my face didn't come out so great. So you know, take your time with it. Um, Use something that loads up or that lathers up faster if you want a quick shave. So Phoenix and Bo's not a uh, quick shave worthy. So just pointing that out there. Most of us use a cream when we're in a hurry anyway. So just know that um, that that by no means distracts from this soap. I mean, it's it's very good and very good packaging. Excellent, excellent labeling. Very unique scents all around. They have a lot of seasonals. Um, very unique. Just a unique company in general. And I, I wish they would make more of a splash in the U.S., um, but the fact that they only have one third-party seller, um, just, I don't know, I'm not really sure what happened there, but um, a few cents have made, it away, made their way over and are popular, but um, overall, I wish they would, uh, you know, be a little bit easier to obtain, but I'll, I'll provide links for you at the bottom, at the in the menu down there for, for Australia, U.K., Canada, and the U.S., if you want to buy it, so look down there and find the best deal for you. Um, and so, yeah, 
great soap all around. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't all done so already. Comment below if you have anything to discuss about Phoenix of Bow or this soap in general or just shaving. And uh, I'll see you next time.